My reaction to reading the script uh, was one of tears. I cried. And there aren't many scripts that can make me cry. And uh, it was something that I just felt compelled to want to be a part of. I wasn't, at that point, partnered with Jim. I was uh, leaving being a studio executive. And I had several different options to work with different uh, directors at the time. And having read Planet Ice, because that was the code name for Titanic, um, it was something that I felt very passionate about and uh, ex excited to get the opportunity to do it. I, I had worked with Jim as a studio executive. I was uh, the studio suit assigned uh, to True Lies. I remember when Jim found that out, he thought True Lies would be a more of a hands-off production, that he came into a meeting we were having. Um, and he was a little bit late, and he came in, but he walked right around the table, ignored everybody else after hearing I was going to be involved, and walked up to me while I was sitting down and looked down at me and said, so I understand we're going to get to be pretty good friends or bitter enemies. And I looked up at him and I said, pretty good friends, I hope. And I think that's how it turned out. Well, I, I think one of the great lessons from Titanic is, yeah, the ship sank. But the story is about the people. And we go on a journey with these two characters, Caden and Leo, as they go through the movie. And we have a different experience. We know the ship sinks, but we're not thinking about that. And one of the best news that we got when we previewed the movie for the first time for an audience to get their feedback, we knew the movie was, at that time, too long. And I always felt that the goal was to get rid of the T-O-O in front of long. And what audiences told us was where they wanted it to be shorter was during the sinking, which told us that the character story was working, the love story was working, and that's what separates the film from so many others. What Jim was like working on Titanic was what he needed to be. He needed to be a general running a big, complicated set, and he needed to uh, do it with, with, with a voice of, that was commanding, but also a voice of compassion uh, when, when he needed it. And the logistics of Titanic and the scale of that uh, required Jim to be on top of his game for every single shot that we were doing. But day in and day out, what I was always impressed by Jim, no matter how big the crane was that he was doing a camera shot from, no matter how many extras, he always focused on the performance, whether it be between Jack and Rose, whether it be between Rose and her mother, whether it be between you know, Ismay and, and Thomas Andrews. It, it came down to him that the scale and the spectacle wasn't what was important. It was the drama and the performances he was able to get from all of the cast. Well, yeah, look, I, I don't think it's a question of re-experiencing the Titanic. I think anybody who's only watched it at home has never experienced Titanic. I think that uh, this is a movie that plays differently on the big screen. I think you are drawn into these characters. You are drawn into the jeopardy uh, of the sinking like you couldn't be at home. And I think people owe it to themselves to see it on the big screen.